much better than hitting it and losing it. Running a little bit late today. Didn't get out the door when I wanted to. Um, so, just running over. Still gonna go to Hash House, get some food. I neglected to mention this in the previous video, but I did leave a comment uh, letting you guys know that I cashed the Colossus Flight C, but busted. Cashed for $12.94. So the interesting thing about Colossus is that you make the money near the end of day one. Like three, le three or four levels, I think, before. No, maybe even like five or six levels before the end of the night. That basically means that if you bust before the end of the night, you can cash without making day two. And so they let you re-enter um, a, a different flight. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm already registered. Uh, I registered last night for flight E. That's this morning at 10 a.m. Because I'm already registered, I got a little bit of a late start and I'm gonna be in a bit of a rush. I don't mind being a few minutes late, but for Colossus, you don't really want to register in like level, you don't really want to hop in in like level three or something, because you just end up too short stacked. The other bad thing about leaving late is that it's already over 90 degrees. And I'm in jeans today because, let's be real, the Rio is usually pretty cold. Wish me luck. Brad here for the first time. What's up, I'm, guys? I don't make it into Vegas too often, so yep. glad I got to see you. Yeah, glad I got to see you too. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get that vloggers game going in Sacramento, but uh, we'll probably have to do another one where we can all yeah, get you in there. Maybe, and... maybe next time. Um, yeah. We're both on the Colossus grind right now. Something like 3,700 people in so far. Sounds about right. And uh, we're going to 150, 300. I got a break. good feeling about you, man. I think you're gonna win this one. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. If Brad says it's going to happen, I feel good about it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you've got 6K in chips? Yeah, 6K. Cool, man. I've got 3,800. Got some work to do. But the um, field is pretty soft. I think for both of us, the tables are good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So it uh, should, be, should be fun. I'm going to double up or bust this thing pretty quickly. <laughs> hey, that's the way to do it, though. You can just go hit some cash games, right? The Warriors are playing the Cavs later, so oh, i got to oh. watch that game. That'll do it, too. Yeah. All right, guess All we right. gotta get to it. See you guys. Busted Colossus didn't cash this time, but I played cash, uh, just won three today, and got into a pretty good game, but I got stuck, lost a big flip, and lost a few other pots with top pair. Managed to work it back when I won a big, big flip. All right, so I didn't get to finish telling you guys about the Colossus, but yeah, I busted and I played cash and uh, played a pretty crazy hand where it was like a few limps, a raise to 18, two calls. I over call with ace queen offsuit. Um, I'm, I have like 350 to $400, something like that, maybe 370. Uh, and then it's either the small blind or the big blind shoves for like 250 for 150 he shoves for 150 so it folds around to the guy immediately on my right who's in for 18 and he tanks for a long time and calls because of how long it took him and because of how it looked like he was genuinely thinking i was pretty confident that he did not have a hand like you know ace king i also probably would have three bet that already um, and he's never gonna have aces or kings the person who shoved could have those hands but again kind of because of how he did it, it was pretty pretty quick and like no Hollywooding at all he's like you know just shipping it in there I felt like he had some sort of medium pair like he could have Queens Jacks but he could just as easily have like sixes through tens and I think a lot of players there would, at 1-3, at least consider just flatting with Ace-King. Some of them might shove too, 
So you can have ace-king sometimes, but I figured the vast majority of the time I can be flipping with that player with a lot of dead money. And the player who cold calls I'm ahead of the vast majority of the time. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's what I was thinking about. And um, I decided to shove over the top, so which is another like, I think it was like 240 more, 230 more, something like that. And we have almost exactly the same stack size. So he tanks like for two minutes or something and calls. Um, the flop comes ace, seven, four. Uh, the turn is a three. And the river is a king. So I just turn over my hand right away. The guy who shoved turns over tens and he's pretty upset about it. He's been running pretty bad. And the player who called and then called again uh, didn't show, but he had it was almost positive that he had like a pocket pair. All right, so I thought I was recording for like the last two minutes, but apparently I, I stopped the recording by accident. Um, now, now I'm pretty much done for the day. I'm heading over to get dinner with some cards chat people. Not really doing any more playing tonight. Um, I was in for 900, out for 1100 today, so that was good. Uh, good to book a small win after busting Colossus. Whoa. That's the train going by. It's literally right over there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just waiting on an Uber now to take me to the Hard Rock Cafe where we're gonna eat dinner. And the Uber is taking kind of a long time. But after that, I think I'm gonna be done playing. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do some work on this video. Maybe upload tonight. If not, hopefully tomorrow morning. And we are gonna actually, I'm gonna be playing the tag team event tomorrow. So Wendy from uh, yesterday's video, what? My Uber canceled on me, so that's not really cool. Anyway, playing the tag team tomorrow with Wendy. And um, I might talk a little bit later about what our strategy is gonna be for tagging. I've never played a tag team event before, but we talked a little bit about it. Of course. <laughs> All right, we've got that situation where everything in this condo is buzzing. I'm also kind of losing my voice a little bit from all these meetups. I'm talking a lot more than I normally do, uh, and it's loud in a lot of these spots that I've been in Vegas. So uh, bear with me here. Gonna do my best. Let's get into some Colossus Flight E hands. So this hand is 50, 100, second level of the tournament. It's got a bout starting stack, which is 5K. The cutoff makes it 225. The button makes it 600. And I'm in the big line with pocket eights. We're all pretty much starting stack. I think you could argue for any option here. I don't really love four betting. Folding seems pretty tight given what my reads on these players were. The three better was extremely active and the player who opened was pre-fit or fold post-flop, so I expect if I cold call, it's likely getting called by the cutoff, and he's usually not gonna have a hand strong enough to four bet, so I think it's pretty good. I call, and as expected, the cutoff calls as well. Flop is 762 rainbow, so pretty good for us. I mostly wanted to flop a set, but this isn't bad either. I check, and the cutoff now leads into the button three better. Cutoff bets 600, which is a little bit under a third of the pot, and the button folds. It's possible that the cutoff could lead with something like tens or nines here, but I also just kind of got a vibe that he was just kind of leading because this wasn't a good board for a preflop three better necessarily. So I call. The turn is another seven and it goes check, check. The river is a five. I check. He now bets 1100. Same thought process as I had before. Don't think he has anything. I go ahead and call and he turns over the good old ace 10 offsuit. So take that one down. That's a pretty good hand to uh, kick us off get us up above starting stack. This next hand, we're still at 50, 100. We've got about 9K now. I think I want another small pot before this one. Open the cutoff with red queens. I make it 300 because the big blind is a pretty loose player. Sure enough, it folds to her and she makes the call. The flop comes 10, 8, 3 with two hearts and she actually ends up leading for 250 into 700. Kind of weird, but I 
think when she does this, she basically always has something like one pair in her hand, one pair on the board, or some kind of draw. And it basically means I'm always ahead, but she always has equity. And she's pretty bad. I just shoved. I felt like she was gonna call way too often against this gigantic sizing. And I make the max value and when she calls and when she doesn't call, I take down the pot, which is also an okay result. So I shoved, she thinks for about, I don't know, 15 seconds only and calls with queen, yep, you heard me right, queen eight offsuit. From my tone of voice, you can probably tell what's gonna happen here. The money's all in, just gotta run out the board, fade two cards, and I guess a backdoor runner, runner gut shot. It turns an eight, no waiting. I'm effectively drawing dead. I have one out to spike a boat that would give her a worse boat. Doesn't come, she makes a boat, three on the river. She doubles through. And we are not quite back down to starting stack, but it was a big hit for sure. The next hand occurs at 200, 400 with a 50 ante. Now, I obviously played some hands in between those levels, but none of them were super big or super notable, I thought, so we're just skipping ahead. I open Ace King in the hijack to 800. I have something like 7K in my stack right now. The same villain from the previous hand is on the button, and she makes the call. Flop comes Jack 6-6 six, six, Rainbow. I decide to check. She bets 700, which is smaller than the preflop sizing, and I decide to make the call. I have two overs. I think I am actually gonna be ahead decently often. And if I'm not ahead right now, I might be able to take it away uh, on later streets. But I don't really have to think about that too hard because the turn is a king and I check. She decides to check it back, which I expect her to do with pretty much her whole range, but I kind of don't like leading as it seems kind of face up and I don't really know what bluffs I could ever have in that spot. The river ends up coming a brick. It's a seven offsuit, and I very quickly bet 2,000. I figured this sizing and betting very quickly would look kind of fishy, kind of look like I'm just bluffing with something like ace high. And sure enough, she thought for only like seven or eight seconds and called with pocket tens. So I took down a nice one there and chipped up. From there, I chipped up more. Uh, I ended up making it up to about 25,000 at my high point. Uh, and this was at 250-500 with 75 ante. In this next hand, I just, there's not really anything to talk about. I get it in with ace-king against pocket nines for about 6,000, which was around a third of my stack at the time, maybe a little bit less. And uh, nines hold up. So, not much to talk about there, but it knocked us down to a significantly less playable stack. And I bled somewhat before playing this hand. Blinds are 250-500 with 75 ante. I open pocket sevens to 1,000 and I'm under the gun. Under the gun plus one, so the guy on my immediate left calls, as does the big blind. Flop is 6-5-2 all spades, and I have the seven of spades in my hand. So, as far as possible boards could go, this is pretty good for this exact hand uh, with, with the seven of spades in my hand. The big blind checks, I go ahead and decide to bet 2,000. Playing to go all in on a decent amount of turn cards, if I get called on the flop but I'm definitely happy to take this one down if I can. The turn is an offsuit four, which adds open-ended to my flush draw and over pair. And I think this is a pretty good card to follow through with the plan. Uh, I was putting him on a decent amount of like ace of spades X type hands. And there's other types of stuff you can have too that we're either ahead of or have so much equity against that we can't really do anything else but the money in. Um, so I'd rather get him to fold a hand like you know, whatever, king of spades, queen of diamonds, or ace of spades, jack of hearts, then have to check call against those hands, because if they fold, I mean, those are hands with a lot of equity, so I'm very happy with them folding and taking down the pot. So I shove, unfortunately he calls with the nut flush, as in I'm drawing dead on the turn. He covered me by about 2,000, something like that, so that was it. I was out of Colossus Flight E. No cash, not really that close. Um, was very happy with my play overall in the tournament though, and it was actually a really enjoyable table to be on. This is something that I think is a little bit underrated and not really talked about that much, but I mean, this was a table with people talking, you know, just light conversation and nobody really berating people. 
uh, despite some very bad play, I will say. Uh, but it, it was very fun to just be on that table for you know a few hours with those players. By the way, in a past video, I did mention uh, Crush Live Poker, which I'm a subscriber of. I do think that it's a great way to improve your live poker game, particularly in cash games, but there's a tournament series as well, which I've found pretty useful myself. I really love the old videos from Corwin Cole, AKA Vital Myth. So if you guys want to check out a free month from Crush Live Poker, I'll leave a referral code in the description, or you can just use code MVA401 uh, when you sign up. No obligation just one free month. If you do decide to continue on with Crush Live Poker, you'll be supporting this channel as I will get a small kickback from that. Also, Brendan, who watches the vlog, asked for a quick shout out. His daughter Natalie was born just a couple days ago. Congratulations, man, that is fantastic news. Hope you guys are all happy and healthy and doing well. There's your shout out, man. I also have to give a couple other quick shout outs. Uh, a lot of you guys have come up to me in the Rio and said hi, that's been really cool. Uh, it's been fun just kind of, you know, chatting with a couple of you briefly. There's no way I'm going to get names, and a lot of you guys just kind of said hi in passing, so I didn't get your name. But I definitely met a John, and I think an Edward. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't miss anyone who gave me your name. I'm sorry if I did. Uh, feel free to comment below and call me out on it. Um, usually when you guys come up and say hi to me, I try to make a point to write down, write down your name because I know I'll forget it. Uh, but you know just kind of wandering around the Rio. I haven't always had the chance to do that So just want to say thanks to you guys again for saying hi if you haven't subscribed yet Please consider doing so there's a big red button down below Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video Feel free to leave me a thought about the hands that I just talked about and I'll see you guys in a couple days